Ahoy hoy, I'm Plan Walk, and welcome back to my last video for Sleeping Warrior Week. So the first video I did for Sleeping Warrior Week was a video about how Anthony Riley doesn't understand the philosophy behind the scientific method, and he didn't like that. Just check out this message that he sent me. Scientific method is empirical, not philosophical. We are saying that science is being raped, and you are demonstrating that perfectly. From me to you, as a friend, take the video down, or I will dedicate a show to it, and you will be seen as a rapist of science. Our main target. So no, Riley, I will not be taking the video down. But before you go ahead and make that video, be sure to pay close attention to what I say in this video. So one of the things that Anthony Riley didn't like about my video was the fact that I didn't have any citations for what an independent variable was. So here's a citation for you, Riley. All right, let me utilize my calm and soothing voice. An independent variable is the variable you have control over, what you can choose and manipulate. It is usually what you think will affect the dependent variable. In some cases, you may not be able to manipulate the independent variable. It may be something that is already there and is fixed, something you would like to evaluate with respect to how it affects something else. The dependent variable, like colour, kind, time. There we go. What do you think about that, Anthony? But the fact is, I gave 10 citations for what an independent variable is. Weird flex, but okay. So first off, I want to explain what Riley is misunderstanding. I'll show you a couple of his citations, and then I'll explain where he's gone wrong. An independent variable is the presumed cause. The independent variable is systematically manipulated by the investigator. It is the presumed cause. Independent variables are felt to cause some change in the dependent variables. Think of the experiment as a cause and effect exercise. The independent variable is the cause factor. This is an egg. So from those particular citations, it does sound like the independent variable is your presumed cause. Now it is technically correct to say that your independent variable can be your presumed cause, but it is a non sequitur to say that your independent variable must cause the dependent variable. A better way to word this is it can cause a change in the dependent variable. In fact, citation 9 said that. Now to be ultra specific, it is usually a change in the independent variable, which causes a change in the dependent variable. Now another thing to point out is that just because an independent variable causes a change in the dependent variable, that does not mean that it is the single only cause that's taking place. For example, if I press the letter P on my keyboard and the letter P comes up on screen, me pressing the letter P on my keyboard, that did cause it. But also the electricity flowing through the wires caused it. Also the CPU caused it. There are multiple causes that came from me pressing the letter P. Now keep in mind, if I never press the letter P, that wouldn't have happened. Electricity wouldn't have flown through the wires. So yes, it is a cause but there are also multiple causes that come from that cause to cause the effect. And this is really the crux of the issue with Sleeping Warrior, and Nathan Oakley, and Quantum Eraser. Never mind that whole time can't be an independent variable bullshit. The crux of the issue is what they think of as causes, and they think that there can only ever be one cause for something. Sleeping Warrior has actually demonstrated that this is understanding, by throwing away buoyancy. Because he knows that density is a reason why some things sink in water and some things float in water, he thinks that buoyancy can't be the reason for it. When in actuality, yes, density is a reason why some things float and some things sink in water, but also buoyancy is the reason as well. In fact, part of the formula for buoyancy is the density of the medium. Here's an experiment idea for Anthony Riley to show that buoyancy is indeed a force. Have two beakers. One beaker will have a liquid which an egg can float in, and another beaker will have a denser liquid which an egg can float in. Hold an egg down to the bottom of each beaker. Let them go. Which egg will reach the top faster? Buoyancy predicts that the egg in the denser medium will reach the top faster. Buoyancy also predicts that once at equilibrium, the egg in the less dense medium will displace more liquid than the egg in the denser medium. This of course is provided that the buoyant force is enough to overcome the gravitational force. So, a couple of experiment ideas for you Anthony Riley. How about you try them? 
This is a parts per million counter. Now I just want to touch on this point very briefly. A parts per million counter is not used to calculate the density of something. It is not a density calculator. What you can actually do to calculate the density yourself is take a litre of the substance and just weigh it. Now because the earth is spinning, that is not the most accurate way to figure out the density of something, but it works well enough. In fact, I vaguely remember in primary school or intermediate school, that was how we figured out the density of stuff. Fun fact, you can also measure the density of the egg by dropping it in water where it sinks and then measuring the amount of water it displaces and then weighing the egg. All right, next point. Now this is the only point which Sleeping Warrior may have some kind of ground on, and that is the independent variable doesn't have to be directly manipulated by the experimenter. Now there's two routes to go down on this. The first route, you have to directly manipulate the independent variable, so if it's the density of the water, you have to physically change the density of the water. Or there's the route of you can't have something like time as your independent variable. Now for the first one, it's very easy to address. So I'll do that first. What is Anthony Riley actually changing in his experiment? He's actually changing the salt concentration of his water. That's what he's physically changing. Now that does affect the density. So you can still say he is manipulating the density, but he's not physically changing the density of the water because water is an incompressible liquid, so you can't really change the density of it. Now as for something like time not being able to be an independent variable, give me citations for that please, because I have actually looked. The closest that I can find is in one book, and it just says that this person says that time cannot be an independent variable. Now whenever you do a search on Google for whether time can be an independent variable, it generally says that time is always an independent variable. You do get a few that say that time can be a dependent variable, but that's not usually the case. So even when it says that time can be a dependent variable, it says that it's usually an independent variable. Like in this citation. Get ready for this voice some more. So one thing to note here is that x refers to independent variable and y refers to dependent variable. Okay, so sometimes the x variable can't actually be controlled but only chosen by the researcher. This is especially the case when some version of time is the x variable. However, be careful. Just because a variable includes time does not mean that it is automatically the x variable. Sometimes the amount of time a process takes is the effect of a treatment and then it's the Y variable. This is my egg. Yes, Riley, we know that's your egg. You can keep it. Also, it should be noted that the citations that I'm using are all from EDU links. And for a bit of humor, I'm going to cite a particular EDU link for why time can be an independent variable. Independent variable is what is varied during the experiment. It is what the investigator thinks will affect the dependent variable. In our coffee bean example, Possible independent variables include amount of fertilizer, type of fertilizer, temperature, amount of H2O, day length. All of these may affect the number of beans, weight of the plant, leaf, etc. Day length, hmm. That's a measurement of time, isn't it? So if that citation looks familiar to anyone, it might be because I just took it straight from Anthony Riley. The independent variable is what is varied during the experiment. It is what the investigator thinks will affect the dependent variable. Boy, am I glad that Anthony Riley doesn't cherry pick his citation. He only cherry picks the lines from the citation. You see, if Iron Realm Media had have just read the next paragraph, it would have shown that time can be an independent variable. And if you want to argue that day length isn't a form of time, you're a fucking idiot. And Sleeping Warrior, if you're watching this, please, please do not try to argue that day length isn't a form of time. I will probably actually have to go to hospital if you do from face palming myself too hard. So Riley, I don't think that citations are working for you at this point because you clearly don't understand what the citations are trying to say. You'll take one citation, look at it and go, ah, this looks like it's saying that time can't be an independent variable and then completely ignore all the citations that say that time can be an independent variable. This is why I tried arguing philosophy in my initial video, because at least then we have some footing to have a dialogue on it. 
because if you don't understand something, you will just keep on bringing up the same old citations that you misunderstand. If we argue philosophy, at least in that case, we can say, okay, well, why do you interpret it this way? And why are you applying it this way? Because if we're just arguing citations, we can both argue that each other is misinterpreting what we're looking at. Whereas if we argue philosophy, we can say, well, why is one interpretation better than the other? As far as I can tell, I have made a good case for why my interpretation is correct and why your interpretation is wrong. And if you want to keep on arguing that we should use your interpretation, you need to make a case for it rather than just saying, oh, this is how I interpret it from these citations. That's not going to get the debate anywhere. Alternatively, you could try and find me one scientist who will explain to me that I'm wrong, who is actually willing to sit down and I can bring up some points and he can tell me why I'm wrong on those points. Because I have talked to scientists and they agree with what I'm saying. Because I think that it's quite clear that whenever Riley looks at something like a paper or a citation or an article from Scientific America, he will think that it agrees with him. But seeing as this is a video about citations, I would like to read out one more citation. And don't worry, it is an EDU link, so you know, I don't have to worry about it being corrupted by someone having their own interpretation or whatever it is that you can't trust from non-EDU links. And it's by Dell. Huh. Dell, did you write this? No! Independent variable. The factor which is measured, manipulated, or selected by the experimenter to determine its relationship to an observed phenomenon. In a research study, independent variables are antecedent conditions that are presumed to affect a dependent variable. They are either manipulated by the researcher or are observed by the researcher so that their values can be related to that of the dependent variable. For an example, in a research study on the relationship between mosquitoes and mosquito bites, the number of mosquitoes per acre of ground would be an independent variable. While the independent variable is often manipulated by the researcher, it can also be a classification where subjects are assigned to groups. In a study where one variable causes the other, the independent variable is the cause. In a study where groups are being compared, the independent variable is the group classification. After listening back to what I just read, I should read like that more often. But anyway, pushing ego aside, that citation actually sums up perfectly what I think of independent variables. And I do like the example that they give, because you can't manipulate how many mosquitoes are in a given area. But you can take two areas and compare them. So yeah, I believe there was another thing I had to address in this video, but what was it? Yeah, that's what he's saying. Are you so serious? Yeah, yeah, he's saying that you can have three or four independent <laughs> who, variables. Who is this? Oh, that's right. When I claimed that you could have three or four different independent variables in the same experiment. Oh, wait, I never claimed that. I only claimed that you could have three or four different independent variables over different experiments that are testing the same dependent variables. So, Riley, if you're going to make the claim that I said that you could have three or four different independent variables in the same experiment, then you are misrepresenting my point. My point was that there are a number of variables that can impact a dependent variable. You can choose any one of those variables to be your independent variable. What I didn't mention in my other video was that the other variables that aren't your independent variable that could be the cause would be your controlled variables. But, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory that that was what I meant. You know, there are some things that I shouldn't have to explain to people. And I should also mention to Riley that my initial video wasn't actually talking about his egg video. It was based on the conversations that I had had with him in debates. If I had have seen his egg video, I would have done so much more roasting during the roast of Anthony Riley. This is an egg. That it is, Riley. So, I feel like this would be a good place to end the video. This is my egg. Yes, Riley, we know it's... Wait a second, roosters can't lay eggs. Who did you steal it from? So I've caused it. I did it with the salt. That's not how you make eggs. And don't ever do it with salt again.
But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you think. Also, be sure to watch to end for shenanigans. As always, a big shout out to my $20 patron. What Jesus? If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. Link will be in the description. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. And actually, this is the first time of me saying this this week. Between you and me, thank you for watching. I will also try and keep everything else constant. The volumes of water, not no change, just the density of the medium. This is tap water, regular tap water. This is an egg.